Hi, I'm Justin, and this is the Roland VR50 HD Mark II. In this video, we're going to be talking about audio mixing. We will cover the audio inputs and outputs, the mixer section of the hardware panel, and the audio processing effects. First, let's go over the audio inputs and outputs on the back of the VR50 HD Mark II. In the audio input section, there are four TRS XLR combo inputs, as well as four pairs of stereo inputs, two pairs of RCA inputs, and two pairs of TRS inputs. Also note how TRS inputs 5 and 7 can also be assigned for additional microphones. In the audio output section, you have the main XLR outputs, as well as RCA outputs for the AUX1 bus, and TRS outputs for the AUX2 bus. Next, we'll go over the audio controls on the panel. You can see for each input on the audio mixer, you have a fader control for inputs 1 through 4, as well as 5 through 12, and the main mix. You also have solo and mute buttons for each channel and the mix. You can see there are meters for each input channel as well, gain controls for mic inputs 1 through 4, gain controls for mics 5 and 7 if activated, USB audio level control that's independent from the mix, and the headphone audio control. Here for channels 5 through 12, you can also see an indicator of whether the microphone source is selected for 5 and 7, or if you're using the line inputs, or if you're using embedded audio from a video source. This indicator will light up if audio follows videos enabled. Next, let's go over the audio settings for inputs 1 through 4. Press the select button of the audio channel that you want to adjust, and here you can turn on or off phantom power, engage solo or mute, you can adjust the analog gain, which is tied to the gain knob, there's a separate digital gain adjustment, as well as a level adjustment that's mapped to the fader. You can engage a high pass filter, you can set audio delay for an individual input channel, as well as pan the audio left or right. There are also aux sends for the two aux outputs that I mentioned earlier, and a reverb send if you're using a reverb effect. For the aux sends, you can choose whether it's pre or post fader, and if you want to bring this value up to 0 dB, simply press the unity button. On the next page, you have your audio effects. You have a noise gate, with which you can edit the threshold and release time, a compressor where you can set the threshold, attack and release times, makeup gain and ratio, an equalizer with four bands that you can edit the frequencies of, as well as effects. You can use a voice changer where you can change the pitch, format, and the amount of the effect in the mix, as well as a robot function, and also anti-feedback. Anti-feedback is helpful if you're setting up a live production and the microphone is close to a speaker. To turn an effect on or off, simply just press the off button and it will turn to on. Next, we'll go over the audio input settings for channels 5 through 12. Press the select button for the channels that you want to adjust, and here you'll see a similar menu as before. Here you can also set it to the mic input for channels 5 and 7, and you can see you can also adjust the analog gain using the gain knob on the console. On the next page, you'll see the same set of effects as you do with mic inputs 1 through 4. This changes if you change the source to either a line input or an embedded video input. You can see the FX section disappears. You otherwise have the same set of controls as you do with mic inputs 1 through 4. If I go to channels 9 and 10, there's no mic input available for it, so you see that that option disappears. Next, we'll go over the audio output settings. Press the select button above the main fader, and here you'll be in the audio output menu. You can see you have a digital meter as well as level solo and mute controls for the main bus as well as the AUX1 and AUX2 buses. On the next page, you can set the output bus assignment for each of the audio outputs as well as the video outputs. You can also adjust the audio bus assignment for the headphones if you want to monitor the AUX mix. And finally, let's go over the additional audio features in the menu. Press the menu button and then press the EQ slash dynamics button. Here, you can see a four-band EQ for each audio bus, as well as a compressor or limiter that you can apply to that bus. There is also a 15-band EQ for each bus that each has its own dedicated page on the menu. Under reverb slash delay, you can apply audio delay to each bus, or if you remember from earlier, the reverb send that each individual input channel has can be sent to this reverb effect, which can then be returned to an aux, and you can choose the room type. 
Thank you for watching this video on the Roland VR50 HD Mark II. For more information, please go to the Roland Pro AV website and be sure to check out the support knowledge base.